Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Political Brown Kid here and bringing you one of many conversations on religion, specifically on the Christian faith, being as though I reside here in the United States and that is the dominant religion um, here. And also because that's the religion that I have the most familiarity with, so I can talk most about that. I can't really talk about Islam a lot. Uh, I read um, a few of the books in the Quran or a few of the chapters in the Quran, but I'm not educated enough to speak on that. Can't speak on Buddhism, can't speak on Judaism, can't really speak on any of the other religions. So that's why I'm kind of having this conversation around Christianity. But I'm also having this conversation around Christianity too for several other reasons, because number one, I'm familiar with it, so I think that I can have um, some pose some questions, you know, possibly as a devil's advocate, so to speak. Um, and then also just the curiosity of, of, you know, why is it that African-Americans, not even just African-Americans, I can even speak for Africans throughout the diaspora, Nubians, Africans throughout the diaspora, with this infatuation with being dedicated to the Christian faith. Um, it, it just it's just amazing to me. Um, again, we've lost our religion. We've lost anything of our culture. We, we, if, if you look at the continent of Africa and if you look at Africans throughout the diaspora, they have no ties to anything that they were ever associated with. They have no ties to the, the Orisha. They have no ties to even... Um, the um, ancient Egyptian gods of Isis, um, Osiris, their son Horus, or, or Aset, Osor, um, as most people would know them by their original names, but I just use Isis and Osiris for most people have those uh, distinctions. But we have no concept of what we, our faith was based in, no concept of our own tongue. You go to Africa, they speak about 35 different languages there. You find every African speaking every different language, but probably their own language. And if you go throughout the diaspora, even if you're looking in, for example, in the United States, you hear every black person talking about trying to learn a different language. Everybody wants to learn Spanish. Everybody wants to learn um, some other language, but they never say Swahili. Well, they'll never say a language of, of African um, origin. And the same is true with religion. For hundreds of years, um, blacks throughout the diaspora have clung on to a religion that obviously has not helped them in over 400 years and, and will not help them. But this first conversation that I want to look at is just Kind of what I'm going to be doing is just kind of talking about some of the inconsistencies that I see within the Bible. Now, again, I'm going to say two points right here. I'm not a Bible expert, so feel free if, if you are educated in the Bible to either try to educate me or have a conversation or a debate about it. But I'm not a, um, I'm not an expert in the Bible. I have read the Bible. And of course, I've been around a bunch of you know, I've been around a bunch of people who believe in the Bible. I've been around the faith. So I kind of understand the, the premise of it. And then also, too, my affiliation is I'm not affiliated with the religion. I am agnostic, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. So with that being said, the conversation that I want to look at today is really just, um, and I'm going to try to make this video short and sweet, it's just the foundation of Christianity itself. I have to question the foundation of Christianity itself. And again, for those of you listening, please provide comments. But if you look at the foundation of Christianity, you have to say, well, Christianity says in the Bible in Genesis that God created the earth in seven days. And on the seventh day, he rested. And that was supposed to be the Sabbath day. But if you look at the Christian religion, they moved the Sabbath day from the end of the week, from the seventh day to the first day, which is Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. 
Saturday is the last day of the week. Thus, you have Seventh-day Adventists because they're avid about or adamant about honoring the Sabbath day. That's why they're Seventh-day Adventists. You even look at um, when you look at the, um, the, the Spanish tongue, um, you, you see El Sabado is Saturday, the Sabbath. But the Europeans moved the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. So you have to ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, who would do something like that? Could it possibly be that they have an ulterior motive that they're not true worshipers of, quote unquote, the most high and they're they're having you worship something else other than what you think that you're worshiping? Second thing you have to look at is this. Where is the Holy Land? The Holy Land in, in the Bible, in the Bible, going off of Christian Bible now, the Holy Land is supposed to be Jerusalem, Israel, right? That's what even people today, they, that's why America fights so hard for every time there's an election come up, everybody always wonders, but how, what are we going to do with Jerusalem? How are we going to protect and save um, Israel, they're so America is so concerned with Israel. That's supposed to be the Holy Land, but in the Christian faith, where's the Holy Land? It is Rome. That's where the quote unquote Almighty, the next guy up, the guy that's supposed to be underneath Jesus, I'm assuming, the Pope. That's where he resides. That's where they set up the Holy Temple at. The Christian headquarters. It's in Rome. And then also the other thing that you have to think about too is the Bible itself, the construction of the Bible itself. Apparently uh, so-called whatever the Christian religion was um, created. Uh, you know, the I guess the scholars or whomever the council that was there to create this religion, they determined which books would go into the Bible and which books would not go into the Bible. There were several books left out of the Bible. I'm read, I've am i got one book by, um, I think it's what, the book of Enoch. They call them the Watchers, the Nephilim, and whatever, whatever. But I've read that, and I'm going to be discussing that as well. Um, well, I'm going to be referencing that in a future video that I'm going to make. But what they selectively chose certain books to go into the Bible and certain books to not go into the Bible. So you have to ask yourself, well, why did they choose that? What was their methodology for doing so? See, so these are the things that you have to think about when you're looking at religion. And when you're looking at specifically what I'm saying, when you're looking at the Christian faith, so, and then you have a bunch of black people throughout the diaspora, even on the continent of the motherland of Africa, using Eurocentric names, Hellenized names, Jesus. His name wasn't Jesus, it was Yeshua. And then you even look at the religion itself. The religion is based off of the um, Egyptian story of, again, I've already mentioned, and I'll give you the, the names that most people know them by, Isis, Osiris, and Horus. It's basically that story. You can get the book of the, the Egyptian book of the living, uh, of the living and dead, it, how to go forth by night, whatever it's called. I got the book downstairs. It's, all my, it's packed up in one of my boxes, or I mean, on my bookshelf, but it's down there. And you, you read these books, and this story has been told over and over throughout history, and they cling on to these, um, they cling on to the story that of Jesus Christ. But we're going to have future discussions about that. But these are just a few things that I want you to think about and say, well, and then also just think about in the in the four hundred or five hundred or so years that you've been worshiping and praying to, quote unquote, Jesus. 
in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm still trying to figure out how the heck that thing works out. How can you be your own daddy and your own son and then also a ghost that this, I have no idea? That that whole thing has confused me. So I would love for somebody to really explain that to me because I still can't grasp it. I, I've Googled it and looked it up several times, still don't understand it. But these are things that I have questions about and concerns, and it makes me say, I cannot buy into this. And here also two, 400, 500 years in, in, in regards to exposure to Christianity and as much as black people have prayed, they have gotten nowhere. And I'll do a whole different conversation on that. But I just wanted to leave you with this quick thought. Um, we're going to have plenty more discussions around it, but definitely like the channel so you can get the updates on when this material will be coming out on religion. So you can participate in the discussion. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope that you have a great day. Be well.